Yes, well, uh, what what is the Bible? Well, the Bible is God's word and the world is God's world. So the Bible is actually the real history of the real world. Um, and it tells us about God. So uh, it does tell us about theology, which is the, the study of, uh, of spiritual things. But it also tells us about the real world, about the physical, chemical, biological world that we live in because God is the creator of that. And therefore, if we want to understand the real world, we do need to start with the scriptures. And so we need to have a biblical worldview, uh, not just about biology as we've been talking about, but about geology, about everything to do uh, with the world. Uh, it's not just theological theory that we get in the Bible, we do get a, a lot about the um, what people would call the real world, meaning the, the physical world that we live in. So that's why this topic is important. And it does relate to science, because if we are to go out and study the world, and that's part of the dominion that we were given uh, back in Genesis, where it says that uh, we have dominion over the earth, that does, mean, that does not mean that we have permission to go out and exploit and ruin it. Dominion or um, authority in the Bible always included uh, mostly responsibility to care. Now, if we go back to that idea, uh, as Joseph was talking about, good stewardship in terms of looking after the animals, therefore, if we're to do that in a wise way, in a useful way for us, and in a way that honours God, who is the ultimate owner of all of these things, we need to study it. And so that's where having a biblical worldview of science comes in, um, because we do need to study the world if we are going to uh, look after it or have dominion about, over it in a wise and God-honouring way. But that's also going to be good for us as well, because the earth was made for us to live in. It is our home. And therefore, if we are to enjoy it and um, <clears throat> live in it well, we do need to study it. So that's what good science is. And so it is important to have a, a biblical worldview. And it does work. If we have a look at some uh, recent examples, have you heard of junk DNA? Um, that was. That's an idea that came up uh, when we first started looking at uh, genomes about genetics and there was a lot of genes or a lot of DNA that we didn't understand what it did. Now, because people had an evolutionary point of view for, about the genome, that it all just evolved by chance random processes, there must be a lot of chance random rubbish in it. And so they came up with this term junk DNA. Now, we have now discovered that a lot of that DNA that we didn't understand what it is, is actually important. In fact, it's life-giving um, life and life-sustaining because a lot of that, those regions of the DNA are actually involved in controlling the other genes or the genes that we do know about. In, uh, so that term has been put by the wayside in the professional literature. Uh, it's not used anymore, but it became very much embedded in the language. So there's no junk in the, um, in the DNA. Uh, and if you have a think about how um, <clears throat> you look at the genome from a biblical point of view, if it was designed, there isn't any junk in it. Now, there could be because if we have a look at the history of the world, the world has changed. It hasn't evolved, but it has changed a lot because the Bible tells us the world started out very good and then it's gone downhill. And uh, so I actually have a few uh, slides here which might help people understand that, that big picture. Right, this is the sort of um, picture that most science these days is based on. This is the worldview that's been embedded in mainstream science basically ever since Darwin. Um, and his view of the world was it was a struggle for life. He called it the war of nature. He said, by the war of nature, um, 
things evolved. That's how we went from lower to higher beings. So there's a sort of hierarchy and Darwin did not talk very much about the origin of life, but that has been tacked on, as it were, to the beginning of the evolutionary idea of increasing complexity so that we go from chemicals somehow by a whole lot of processes involving natural selection, mutations, um, under the effects of stress, violence and disease, and we end up with human beings. So chemicals to human beings, and that means that human beings can be just explained in terms of chemistry, and we have a physical connection to animals. We once were animals, um, and in some people's minds, we still are animals, and therefore you can't make any distinction between animals and human beings. Now, that is completely different to the picture that we have in the Bible because we are told that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth and it then goes on to describe all the different things that God created, including human beings. But it makes some very interesting um, descriptions and comments about the status of different living things. And when finally God completed everything, uh, he made this interesting statement. God saw all that he made and behold, it was very good. So when the world was completed, when God had finished with it, so in the beginning when uh, the world was different to what we see now. Now think about what that very good world would have been like. Um, John made a comment earlier about uh, what was it like before the flood when there was no rain? It was very different. This very good world would be different for lots of things. So a very good world of biology, you have fully functioning living things. It describes birds flying, the sea being filled with um, creatures according to their kinds. We're told what people and animals were to eat and all animals <coughs> ate plants in the beginning. Now, there was no struggle or violence. That's not very good. Everyone knows that's not very good. There was no pain or suffering and there was no death. So those things are <clears throat> in the world now, but they weren't there in the beginning and they certainly didn't create anything or help anything evolve. But the world has changed. It's no longer good. And the reason for that is the rebellion of human beings and judgment, God's judgment. Now, we call that in theological terms, right, the fall of man. Um, in fact, it was an almighty crash because the sort of difference that it made to the world was just uh, quite incredible. Um, this was the world's first ecological disaster, if you like, because God cursed the ground. And you can read that in Genesis, God cursed the ground and he said it would grow thorns and thistles. So there you are straight away, you've got a change, but it's not an evolutionary change. It's actually a degenerative change. The world is going downhill. It's no longer good. And this is where death came into the world. And the world became corrupt and violent. And we read about that. In, the, uh, in Genesis, particularly in Genesis 6, which describes what the world was like just before the flood. And then we have a massive judgment of Noah's flood. Again, a huge ecological disaster, a real change. And that's why in that, um, that weather uh, pattern uh, computer model that, that Joseph referred to, if you put Noah's flood into that, if you put... Uh, the, the worldwide flood into that, you come out with a different sort of answer to the standard answer we're getting about climate change now. But if you put that in, it is part of the real world. The whole environment degenerated and you get extreme seasons. So um, you can read there, God warned Noah, right, from now on, there will be regular patterns and cycles, but there will be hot times and cold times, and that's exactly what we see. If we look at the, uh, the history of the climate over the last few thousand years, where we've got the records 
of people who actually lived through those cycles of heat and cold. We might not have the precise um, satellite sort of measurements we've got now, but we have got the records of people who lived through it. Um, so if we want to summarise that, the real history of the world, uh, and <clears throat> that includes biology, geology, meteorology, whatever you like, is it started out good, it was created good, but it has gone downhill because it has been subject to sin and, and judgment. So a good way of putting that is creation, degeneration, or if you like, from good to bad to worse. Now, it's not all hopeless. The Bible tells us that there is salvation and glory uh, in amongst that as well. Um, <clears throat> but we can have a view of biblical biology with that sort of mindset. It was good, but it's gone downhill. So what sort of things will we observe in the real world? Well, if we consider it started out good, we will see the evidence of design. And we see that all the time. We write about that a lot uh, in our newsletter. Uh, one of the things we like to write about is um, a, an area of scientific research now called biomimetics, which is looking at living things and trying to copy them to make robots and um, uh, mechanical devices and chemical devices and things like that based on what we see in living things. Now, you couldn't do that if you didn't have a basic mindset that these things were created or these things show design. Now, scientists would not admit that they're working from that point of view, but that is why it works. That's why we can look at living things and see, yes, we can see how a dragonfly's wing works or how an octopus's tentacle works, and we can design a robot or a flying device that works in that way, and it does work because the original one was designed. So when you get a whole lot of scientists and engineers who were made in the image of God and have got brains and minds to think with and computers to help them with, uh, they can come up with something that is almost as good as the living thing. It's never quite as good. Right? Now, one of the other things we see in the biological world is adaptation. That is actually a design feature, uh, but it also helps things cope when, uh, with the degeneration that's happening in the world today. Now, all of the other things that I mentioned in the, the evolutionary mindset, those are all real things. So don't let anyone tell you that the Bible is anti-science or undermines science because it uh, speaks of the history of the world as being the very opposite of evolution. We do see stress and struggle. We do see natural selection. That's a real process. We do see mutations, which are changes in the, uh, in the genome, in the genetics, and we certainly see disease, death, and extinction. All those things are real. Therefore, we can study them, but they will make far more sense if we look at them from a biblical worldview of something that started out very good, but has been corrupted. And we know why it's been corrupted, because of sin and judgment. So the Bible is not anti-science. The whole idea of creation is not anti-science. In fact, it gives you a proper understanding of science because we can understand where the world has been and where it is going. So the world has certainly changed, but it hasn't evolved. The world has changed, but God has not. And we need to remember that because God is in charge of the world and his world still rules. And that comes back to if human beings are different from uh, the animals, human behavior cannot be explained by animal behavior, uh, just as our biology can't be explained completely <clears throat> by looking at one particular type of animals. Yes, as John said, we do eat like pigs because our digestive system is like that. So we can use them as an animal model. That's a reasonable thing to do. But when it comes to human biology, uh, human behaviour, we must take into account more than just the biology. We can't just study animals and say animals do this and therefore we should do this. No, we have to take into account our biology but we also have to take into account the fact that human beings 
are body, soul and spirit made in the image of God and therefore if we are to understand human behaviour, we need to know God's word. Now, um, before we go into that, uh, perhaps we can have a look at the how um, that biblical worldview of creation followed by judgment impacts on other sciences like geology and geography. 